Salutations everybody, it is Maddie here today with a relatively quick Borderlands 3 news update. During the info blowout where we got the release date, we got all the different additions, confirmation of the Epic Game Store exclusivity, and so on, we thought we covered it all, but PlayStation Blog had something else to say about that, so we have some brand new information for Borderlands 3 today. I'm going to be covering all of it, but I'll have the link to this article in the description down below if you'd like to read for yourself. However, I will be covering all of the major new details in this video here today, so let's go ahead and get ready right into it. It starts off with something we're a bit familiar with. You'll be capable of tracking the Calypso twins and their fanatical followers alone, but when you team up with other vault hunters, you'll really feel unstoppable. With that in mind, one of the things that I'm most excited about in Borderlands 3 are the improvements that we've made to co-op. Regardless of your respective levels or mission progress, you and your friends can play online together or on the couch, and not only will you deal a meaningful amount of damage, you'll also receive your own discreet loot stream. No more loot ninjas! Of course, if you prefer to play with classic Borderlands 2 co-op rules where loot is shared, you can choose to do so. Okay, this helps two types of people. Now, I remember when I played Borderlands 1, the original version, for the first time ever, my best friend Noah would always go ahead and pick up the loot without saying a damn word, and it was so frustrating because I wanted to see if I could get something new for once. So those type of people now do not impact your game in a negative fashion where you're like, oh my god, can I just please see what the enemy had dropped? I'd like to know if I got anything good there. This also helps the type of people who like a more contained experience. I'm just going to worry about what loot I got, you worry about what loot you got, and we'll trade afterwards if we're going to decide that we're going to share loot at that point in time. I personally imagine myself playing on the discrete loot stream just so you can simply remove one extra thing from your head and focus on what you got and not worry that you're taking someone else's loot or something along those lines. However, I like the addition of the classic Borderlands 2 co-op rules because those do enforce a bit of working together. Hey, I want this SMG for my siren. Oh, you want that shotgun for your soldier okay go ahead and take that i'm gonna take this smg and we'll move on with our day it makes you feel good there's something about it because i've been playing borderlands game of the year edition which i'm working on my review for and there's just that good feeling of coordinating your loot that i think is a bit of an intangible in the borderlands universe so i just like to suggest that for folks out there who may think this is a universally good thing that there is a bit of positivity about working out what loot you want to share with your friends lastly and i think the most exciting for folks will be this part regardless of which mode you you opt for every fight in Borderlands 3 as we all know will be an opportunity to score new gear if you've adventured in the Borderlands before you'll recognize most of the weapon manufacturers but I think you might be surprised by some of their latest innovations Atlas now offers guns that fire tracker tags and smart bullets doll weapons feature alternate fire modes and Molly Wan range now incorporates firearms that can toggle between two elements and deal guaranteed elemental damage so we had actually speculated in the the original in-depth analysis for the gameplay trailer that Gearbox had dropped that there were alternate fires on a sniper rifle that was on Moses back because this thing was a huge sniper rifle with a big scope on it but it also had some type of missile on the bottom and I said is this actually an alternate fire so it seems like if that were a doll weapon there that could have been a grenade launcher underneath the said sniper rifle thus indicating there are alternate fire modes. Furthermore, I like the idea of Atlas doing smart guns because we actually saw a taste of that in a game completely irrelevant, I think, to Borderlands, which is Cyberpunk 2077. We saw our main character actually was able to not aim and just hold LT, which would bring up this HUD, and you'd start shooting and the bullets would find the enemies. So what's great about smart guns is that it allows a change in difficulty without actually going in and altering anything in the game. For those who aren't maybe graded FPSs, who don't care about aiming, who don't specialize in that, you'll feel best with a smart gun in your hand because you don't have to worry about aiming too much and you can focus more so on your abilities, which there are going to be a wide range to choose from, building your character, and other aspects that maybe most folks would try to spread the wealth on. But like I said, some people always like to act like the elite gamers, but keep in mind there are people out there who maybe aren't the best at shooters and these types of guns are good for them. Lastly, Molly Wan, I like the idea of toggling between two elements and dealing guaranteed elements elemental damage because often what will happen is I'll have a fire weapon and I'll have a corrosive weapon and that fire weapon may be my level but I hold on to that corrosive weapon from two or three levels
levels ago because when I bump into a certain enemy type, I switch weapons even though that one is technically weaker, it's good against that enemy type. Being able to toggle different elements and deal guaranteed elemental damage is huge because now you can stick with one gun for a little bit longer. I know with the steady loot stream in Borderlands, we're always looking to go on to the next one, but I think that I really appreciated this in Borderlands Game of the Year edition as I've started going through it, which is I stick with guns for a little bit longer than usual, and it makes that decision to move on a little bit harder, and I think it adds to the experience. So having guns that are a little more versatile, that have a lot more options available to you, not only is cool from a gameplay perspective, but it also adds to the experience in keeping you attached to guns so that that stream of moving on from weapon to weapon is enhanced in my opinion. Lastly, I do want to tack on an update for the Epic Store exclusivity surrounding Borderlands 3. This brand new information comes from Kotaku.com. The PC video game store wars rage on, with the newly announced Borderlands 3 being the latest game to pick a side. Gearbox's upcoming loot shooter out September 13th will be a six-month Epic Store exclusive, the developers say. From the press release, at launch on September 13th, Borderlands 3 will be available for PC exclusively through the Epic Games Store. Borderlands 3 will be available on additional PC digital storefronts in April. 2020. Now, I've seen some really interesting takes about the exclusivity for Epic Game Store. Some people receive it more as a blessing because they tend to wait for Borderlands to have all of its DLC out before picking up the entire product. So some people embrace the idea that this game wouldn't be out on the storefront they prefer for a year. I know some people did breathe a bit of a sigh of relief knowing it was six months so they wouldn't have to wait as long for it. Obviously, the best case scenario would be no exclusivity, but obviously that's not going to happen here. But for those who are holding out for Steam, just know your wait isn't super long. And I've also seen some people looking at the more positive side of things saying that, well, my backlog is full. There's a ton of new games to play each and every single day, which is entirely true. So waiting six months for Borderlands 3 wouldn't be that bad. But I know there's folks like me who have been waiting for this game forever and they're like, yeah, I'll play this wherever the hell it comes out. Anyway, that's all the brand new information that came from this PlayStation blog. A relatively short video today. I do apologize for that. I was going to try to squeeze out my Borderlands Game of the Year edition review, but I do not want to rush it. We're very close to the end. I mean, it's a pretty short game given how you can get legendaries right off the bat. So you pretty much dust any bosses and areas in your way. Anyway, do look forward to that. But this is your Borderlands 3 news update. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this in the comments down below. Do fire away, ladies and gentlemen. Other than that, follow me on Twitter, like me on Facebook. Those links are in the description down below along with my Patreon. Do consider supporting that as it fuels all the content I create here. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.